Do you have a fear of being judged or misunderstood by your husband? If he knew who you used to be, would he look at you differently? Do you struggle with communication and expressing your true feelings? You still have that hard exterior to protect yourself, even in your marriage. Or you find it difficult to build trust and intimacy due to past experiences and insecurities. But did you know that embracing vulnerability can lead to immense strength and empowerment within your marriage? Let's explore the transformative concept of the power of vulnerability. Hello, sophisticates. I'm Davina Dandridge, author and emotional empowerment coach. Today, we examine the power of vulnerability in cultivating strength and empowerment within your marriage. You know, many women face challenges in their marriages, such as difficulties in expressing their true feelings because of fear of judgment and struggles with intimacy. These challenges often stem from a reluctance to be vulnerable with their husbands. There are so many myths and misconceptions about relationships and marriages that we buy into all of these things at an early age. So when we get into a relationship, sometimes we have struggled to get over those things that we believe to be true. We think that the behavior that we witness from our relatives or from our friends is how we should conduct ourselves in our own relationships. But let me tell you this. As someone in my second marriage, I understand how dangerous myths can be to relationships. Myths like this, like he's not your daddy, or you should keep all of your friends, including the ones of the opposite sex. Or then there's the whole submission versus what you bring to the table debate that's often exaggerated and used in the wrong context. So when you hear people talking about it, you know, I just back away from those type of conversations. The other things that are detrimental to the empowerment in your relationship is when you vent to people outside of your marriage. That is never a good remedy for marital problems because that's how the myths get promoted. Word of mouth is the best way to get something to go around. So when it comes to the marriage relationships, all the myths. Every myth that you have grown up knowing about must be busted because marriage is sacred. It's not like dating relationships. Your marriage is not like your parents' relationships and definitely, definitely not like the relationships you see on the television. But by developing emotional intelligence, you no longer give attention to these myths. When you are self-aware and you manage your emotions, you see relationships and vulnerability in a new way. In this video, we are focusing on the power of vulnerability as a tool for you to empower yourself within your marriage. Self-regulation and vulnerability are the two keys to empower yourself in marriage. In my book, Brains and Bobbles, Do What Works for You, I emphasize the importance of embracing vulnerability as a pathway to emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment. By being vulnerable, you create an environment of trust, an environment of understanding, and you have authenticity in your marriage. Buy the book and to do it today and begin to embrace vulnerability as a tool. You know, vulnerability is a strength, not a weakness. You are not losing your power when you choose to be quiet during a discussion when you really want to say something. You are not somehow weak because you relinquish your power to your husband in some areas of your life that you've always been in control of, like your finances or dealing with the children. You are allowing your husband to show up as who he is. You are allowing him to show up for you. You are allowing yourself to experience a true partnership without bringing along all of the baggage from your previous relationships. The major barrier to most relationships is communication or lack of communication. Many women have struggles with communication and expressing their true feelings. I've been there too, where you just don't know if how you're gonna say or what you're going to say is going to turn the tide in a good way or a bad way. But let me tell you this, 
Self-expression in marriage is what keeps the marriage going. You can't diminish who you are and not say what you need to say. Incidents and situations from the past can keep you from being vulnerable in marriage and expressing when you are passionate about something. And that's what I mean by keeping the marriage going. Because if you're passionate about something and you express it to your husband, then you can come to a resolution or to a plan on how to incorporate that thing within your marriage. When you have matured <laughs> and put down some habits and ideas from the past, then, you know, you get, I get that because oftentimes you move past things. You don't want to revisit them. You don't want to relive them. And some things that have happened in your past are just too painful to relive. But a lack of vulnerability can be associated with fear of being judged or even being misunderstood. You know, I get it. Shame is a real emotion and it reflects some pain that you've had in your life. You have to address that shame and you can do it privately or you can do it in therapy, but you have to address those things in your past that you are shameful about because oftentimes you don't share those things about your past, past with your husband because you think he may view you differently or you feel that he may no longer desire you once he learns of your past. You know, you share the things that may impact your marriage before the marriage. That's why it's important to date. You know, you can't just say, oh, I'm so in love and I'm just going to go for it. There is a process that you need to go through in order to really get to know somebody and for you to be vulnerable enough to share some key informations about yourself. So before marriage, is when you share those things that you're not so certain that would be accepted in a certain way, but that you really need to share with your husband, okay? In this way, each party can make an informed decision about how to commit to the relationship. But let me tell you this, you don't have to share everything. And I am in no way suggesting that you lie or deceive your husband. However, there are some things that you keep to yourself and you decide what those things are. You decide how sharing or how keeping those things from the past reflects the person that you are now. Before we dive into the next point, if you're finding this content valuable, please, please. give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support helps me to keep bringing you empowering insights. So let's move on to communication. Communication is a true struggle because in today's society, social media offers a debate about masculine women versus submissive women. Now, my take will not necessarily align with the rhetoric that we see online. However, that talk doesn't matter because without emotional intelligence, masculine or feminine behavior will not bring you the successful marriage that you desire. So here we go with my idea about how this really works. I think that masculine versus feminine talk is just garbage, really. The principles of emotional intelligence helps you to recognize and manage your emotions. And at the same time, you are aware of the other person's feelings. In this case, your spouse's emotions. So emotional intelligence allows you to conduct yourself and display behaviors that create a positive result for the both of you. And managing your emotions is not feminine or masculine. So when you communicate with your husband, you're not trying to prove how strong you are or how independent or you are or how you can protect yourself. If these are your first thoughts when you're communicating with your husband, there are some issues or some triggers with your emotions that you haven't addressed yet. Vulnerability means you allow your husband to express himself in communication about your marriage, about the house or the children, without you responding defensively. You don't, don't mistake his difference of opinion as a personal attack on your character. And if things get heated, you are so confident about yourself once you know emotional intelligence that you don't have to go word for word or toe to toe and escalate the talk to an argument. 
See, vulnerability in communication not only allows your husband to express himself, vulnerability gives you the opportunity to see the situation from his point of view. You don't just react out of your emotions. You know, when my husband and I have a difference of opinion, even though I might get emotional, I pause and I listen. You know, and it might take five minutes or it might take five hours, but I will wait to respond. And I know you might be thinking, girl, please, I would not do that. But let me tell you, a marriage relationship is different. It's different from any other relationship that you have. So the way you respond with your friends, the way you respond with boyfriends, the way you respond with other members of your family, it doesn't match here. In a marriage relationship, this is the ultimate commitment. So you put in the work and you do some things that you might not have seen yourself doing before. See, I can only control myself. I can't make him hear me if we're both attempting to express ourselves right in that moment. So one of us has to listen. So since I can only control myself, I listen, okay? Because the break in the conversation allows the Holy Spirit to advise me and allows me to examine the situation with logic, not with my emotions. Most times when you take the vulnerable approach with your husband, you get the outcome that works for both of you. Not just what works for you, what works for both of you. You may be saying, Davina, what if he's a narcissist? What is he doesn't have the capacity to understand or the capacity to love? Why would I be vulnerable to him if he doesn't act right? Listen, there are levels to vulnerability, but at this point, you should be vulnerable to him because you chose him to be your husband. He's not your boyfriend. You made a commitment to a life of partnership and covenant with this man. Okay, so most of all, the act of vulnerability, though, benefits you. In marriage, your influence on your husband is different from when you were dating. And I'll show you. First Peter 3, 1 through 2 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. And not fear of the husband, but fear of the Lord, fear of the word, meaning reverence to what the Lord says. This shows that with vulnerability, a wife can create an environment that encourages open communication and emotional connection. Now that we're discussing the importance of vulnerability and communication within your marriage, it's time to take action towards emotional empowerment. If you're struggling with identifying your emotions and often find yourself reacting impulsively, join my Emotional Reset Challenge. The challenge is designed to help you transition from a triggered responder to an emotional planner, enabling you to curate the life that you truly desire. Click the link in the description to sign up and start your journey to emotional empowerment and stronger relationships. And you can do that today. All right. So let's imagine a scenario where a couple struggles with communication barriers and with emotional distance, where there is some disconnect there, where they don't connect the way that they should with their feelings and with their emotions. Through embracing vulnerability, they open up about their deepest fears, their desires, and their insecurities leading to a deeper emotional connection and a stronger bond. But it takes work. And the phrase that I always like to say is vulnerability is sexy. And I say it like that. Vulnerability is sexy. So what is intimacy but the act of letting down your guard so that your husband is free to let down his guard? Part of your value in the marriage relationship is being a safe place, his safe place. The world, it can be cruel. You need a place that is safe as well. Not a venting platform, but a place of security led by vulnerability. The ability to embrace vulnerability leads to stronger emotional bonds and personal growth. 
intimacy is not just about sex. However, sex is important to marriage. Healthy communication and healthy sex both start with trust. <laughs> Vulnerability in relationships must be founded on trust. Trust is so important to a relationship, not just in the marriage, but the only way you can get to the marriage is to have that trust in the budding relationship. And as your trust builds, your level of vulnerability increases. If you find it difficult to trust when your husband is showing you how he feels about you and he hasn't done anything to break the trust, then you must be dealing with something that you haven't yet identified. And you need to find out why you're so skeptical of people. I go into detail on the concept of overcoming skepticism in a video called Trust and Fulfillment, Three Ways to Break Free from Skepticism for a Life You Desire. I'll put the link in the description. Watch that video and begin to transform yourself from a person who distrusts everyone to a person who evaluates relationships on their individual merit. Vulnerability is not a weakness, but a source of strength and empowerment within your marriage. Embrace vulnerability, foster open communication, and watch your relationship thrive. Share how vulnerability has impacted your marriage in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips on emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment. Let's, let's cultivate stronger marriages through vulnerability together. See you next time.